Good morning. It is. Do you realize that I said last year when I first started watching you, the first thing I said, I would like to meet you. Yeah. And I'm here because of my sister. Yeah. And what I want to ask you is that the most powerful message that I've learned from you, and I've, I've been on learning about the law of attraction for a while, was the power of the emotions. Emotions don't have power. They are guidance of the power of your thought. Right, guiding systems. They are indicator. Emotion is indicator, like the gas gauge on your car. Right. So what I want to understand is that once, last year I started to listen to you about alignment and emotions, it's just strange things started to happen. So as I would lay down and meditate, clear my mind, I would, at night or in the morning, you know, right when I get up, I would ask the universe, show me something today to show me that everything's okay. So I would get up and go to the park, something like that, and I'm walking through the park as I do every morning, and I see two rabbits run literally across my path. And it's like I heard one of the rabbits speak to me, like literally, like the rabbit, like both of them stopped and stood up and I looked at them. And it's like both of them said like, are you gonna say anything? <laughs> like literally. So as one rabbit, decided that I wasn't going to so what the rabbit was saying is you summoned us here you asked for well-being and we are the evidence that you want that's exactly what I was asking for I knew I was going to to a rabbit but it was cool it was like cool it was really cool so one rabbit took off and the other rabbit kind of stood up on the on the hind legs and as I walked away he followed me and was like you're not going to say anything you're not going to say anything huh. five minutes later I go to the, you know, the, the picnic benches at the park. I go to the picnic benches, and I usually get up on top of the bench and do sit-ups because I'm trying to stay in shape a little bit. But when I get ready to sit down, to lay on the bench, there's a bumblebee drinking water. <laughs> and I had never noticed it, but this particular day, I swear to God, the bee talked to me. <laughs> and the bee told me, says, he, in a deep voice, he was like something to the effect of like, um, don't you see me here drinking this water? <laughs> I was going to, you know, I could sting you, but I'm not going to do that. And I just kindly walked away and let the bee have his peace. <laughs> serious. Like, this stuff has really happened to me. Your request of the universe was, show me my well-being. And so the bee had no intention of stinging you. The bee was just minding its own beeswax <laughs> and drinking its water. Yes. Yes, ma'am. That seems logical. Yeah, so I'm just trying to, and then one other instance, one other instance is like, I would like think something, like it's, this is just simple stuff. Well, before you go further, we do want to hear that, but we want to make this point because we really want you to feel the power of what's going on here. So when you meditate as you do, and you come into alignment as you do, and you allow your vibration to rise as you do, and then in that connection with who you really are, those thoughts just come into your experience. Those thoughts and inclinations and inspirations and impulses occur to you. And then the manifestation that matches those shows up. Then you really know you understand it because it's not words that are teaching you. It's the universe showing you how capable it is of giving you each and everything, no matter how big or small you may deem it to be. That's what we are appreciating most about these stories is that you cued yourself up for it. You segment intended, you prepared the vibration of it, but most importantly, you recognized, you understand the correlation between your asking and your allowance and your receiving. And that's everything. Whoa. That's everything. And like, like certain things like, I was, um, I moved from Florida to North Carolina. So in the midst of moving, you know, I've taken my garbage out and I placed my garbage on top of my car. And my friend was in the car with me. And I said to her, it was another guy approaching the garbage can. I said to her, I said, wouldn't it be nice if this guy take my garbage back off the car and just put it in the garbage for me? The guy walks right up to my car, gets the garbage and puts it in the garbage bag. And <laughs> I've been- So question for you. <laughs> Premonition? No, I don't think it's Wait, a criminal. Or creation. 
It's creation for me. But what we're getting at here is it all kind of goes together, doesn't it? Because if thoughts are in the process of turning to things, and you get a bead on the thought that's in the process of turning to things, then maybe you did have advanced notice as you are watching the vibration evolve. And then when it manifests, it's extra sweet, isn't it? And that's the deliberateness that just makes life so delicious. It makes you feel blessed and known and seen and understood and answered. Yeah. So is it like, do these things start out small and like they sort of roll down like a, a, a snowball rolling down here? Do they get big? How does it work? They don't have to start out small, but they usually do because you will let the small things in easier than you will let the large things in. Okay, so how do we let the big stuff in? <laughs> get the small stuff in is good I mean I have spent look I have felt so bad but I feel so good now and it's, how do I let it in by understanding that small or large is the same process and it's the reason that we offer the analogy that bounces off of you and sometimes you get it more than others it's as easy to create a castle as a button it's the same exact process but here's the words that amplify it a little more when the castle feels as possible to you as the button then the castles will flow to you as abundantly as the buttons and so it's all about your approach to it it's how you feel about it you think that some things are more difficult than others but the difficulty is your perception because you're thinking about action and accumulation rather than about vibration when you get it that it's about vibration and you all have access to the vibration you separate yourselves from what you want by putting monetary values on it by putting all kinds of other standards and values on it and then you proclaim yourself failing to meet the standard where when you start talking about vibration and you know how to do that you know how to line up and you start doing exactly as you've been doing noticing the results of the thoughts that you're thinking in getting what you want if you can get rabbits to run around and do your bidding <laughs> We think you've got it going on. <laughs> well, I just want I just want to say one more thing and I'm done. My sister, right there, she told me what only was about three weeks ago when I told her I wanted to come. And she told me, she said, Daryl, I have a feeling you're gonna end up in that in Abraham's chair. And I was like, Well, I told So did you see what she did? She took that moment found the feeling place of that felt it strong enough that she pronounced it to you she told me last night when I got into the hotel set some things in motion but here's the thing that we really want you to hear hundreds and hundreds or thousands of people could proclaim something for you but you got to let it in and what we really want you to hear is you've been proclaiming for yourself all of you do know what I don't want know what I do want so you've been proclaiming you've been asking you've been creating this vibrational reality it's huge but you got to be at the place where you let it in so it's nice to have co-creative partners it's really nice when you understand that you've done enough asking to keep yourself busy for 20 or 30 lifetimes and it's time for you to cash in your vibrational chips and, and when you say when you pick the young man out the back who was in the chair before me, you said something to him of, of, of why, why do you think you got chosen? And then you say his desire to be here was well, greater. So you see when you I sat in that chair because I wanted to be, I sat in that chair and as you talk to him, I begin to say to myself, I appreciate this moment. I appreciate this moment. And you call me next. Yeah. That was like yeah. wild. Yeah. That was wild. That was a wild moment for me. Well, your acknowledgement of it is what we care most about. Your association with what you thought and what happened next. And now there is nothing that you can't be or do or have. Okay, thank you. That's the way.